Hi everyone and welcome back. This is episode four. I was out for the month of June. I've been very sick. I am so glad to be back on my feet and back here with you all. I'm going to read Michelle Duggar's letter to the Honorable Timothy Brooks first. Michelle writes, Your Honor, Hello. I am writing this letter in regards to the sentencing of my son, Joshua Duggar. My heart is to share some things about Joshua's character that may not be fully known to the court. It is my sincere hope these things are taken into consideration as a fair and just sentence is determined. Leading up to this sentencing day, I want to make clear that Joshua has friends and family who will love and support him in his abilities to succeed as a husband, father, business owner, and man both now and in the future. Joshua has a tender heart and he is compassionate towards others. If someone is having a difficult time, he is one of the first to encourage or try to help them in a tangible way. He and his wife and children have helped many others by doing cleaning and repair projects and lending a helping hand. Joshua has always been a positive and upbeat person. He is wise financially, saving money for the future and purposing not to go into debt. He is a good provider for his family, working diligently and thinking of creative ways to support and take care of his wife and children. He is also generous and shares his resources with others in need. One example of his heart to help others is that Joshua has been giving financial assistance to a widow friend of ours for several years. On a personal level, Joshua is an organized and diligent individual. He has set a good example of applying himself eagerly to his work and in the many other responsibilities that he carries as a husband and father. Joshua is a loving and patient man, striving to be a blessing and provide for his family. He has also spent quality time with his wife and children, learning life skills together and going on family outings. Side by side, Joshua and his family have built forts, learned how to work on bicycles and other vehicles, gone camping, hiked, fished, and played countless games and sports together. As I look to his return, I stand ready to offer my continued love and encouragement to Joshua and his family and for their success in the future together. We ask that he be reunited with his wife and family in a timely manner. Thank you, Your Honor, for taking these thoughts into consideration. We implore your wisdom for a just decision in this matter. Thank you for your time. Respectfully, Michelle A. Duggar. And as many people have already commented, uh, Michelle did sign her name with a heart over the I. Now, this is something that I've seen since I was a kid. She signed her name with a heart as long as I can remember. Thank you cards, notes. It's always been with a heart. Um, Of course, on a legal document to a federal judge, it doesn't seem very appropriate. A few things about Michelle's letter. You might have noticed how she focused on together. That... Joshua did all of these things with his family together, that she is going to support Joshua and his family for their success in the future together. And the focus on this is that in the cult, divorce is one of the top sins. If you divorce, you basically subjugate the remainder of your life to being a failure and to being outside of God's will and God won't bless you and you're pretty much doomed. Not to mention ostracized by people, other people within the group because divorce is one of the top sins. Her focus in this letter of that it will be Josh and his family together. It's a very small glimpse of the pressure that Anna is under to stay with Josh, to remain faithful to him to stay you know pretty much under the authority of other male figures while josh is in prison in order to be the faithful wife who goes and visits who takes the children to visit who 
is there waiting for him when he gets out of prison. It provides that small glimpse of of the pressure and the expectation that Anna will comply and that Anna will not leave him and will not separate and will not divorce from him and that she will be positively speaking of Josh to the children, portraying him in a positive light and building him up in the eyes of their children while he's away. All of that's encompassed in that in those words. In the first paragraph, Michelle says, my heart is to share some things about Joshua's character. This verbiage is classic cult lingo, my heart. It's very much the focus on sharing your heart. It invokes some kind of communication that is supposed to be more receptive to other people who are listening. If you're sharing from your heart, then their heart will receive it and it's a deeper connection to communicate and it's gonna be more effective. That sentence conveys that motivation that if she shares from her heart, then it will really touch the judge's heart and make a difference and make an impact on behalf of her son. The focus on Joshua's character, this also stems from the cult, Bill Gothard and in his organization in IBLP and ATI, the focus on character permeated every teaching, every conference. I believe there were like 49 character qualities. The emphasis on character, exemplary character, then employers and bosses and coworkers and leaders of governments will see and appreciate your strength and depth of character and it will, and will raise you up to do amazing things, to be in amazing positions, and that you won't need a secular public education, you know, a bachelor's degree or a master's or a, a PhD or any of those degrees, that character is sufficient to do all the things you need to do and trumps education. That's a huge emphasis within the cult. I know personally countless survivors from the cult, male and female, who have suffered tremendously because of the lack of education that they received and the educational neglect and the pressure not to attend college as well. Michelle's focus on Josh's character stems from the cult and that brainwashing, that character trumps everything else. Now, I think also for her to focus on Joshua's character and to say that Joshua, quote, has a tender heart and is compassionate toward others, end quote. That is so in your face to the judge, to the jury, to me as a survivor, to the victims who were so used and traumatized and abused in the child sexual abuse material that Joshua possessed and downloaded. It's disgusting, absolutely disgusting to say that he has a tender heart and is compassionate toward others when these tiny children are being tortured. That's terrible. Michelle also focused on, quote, Joshua has friends and family who will love and support him in his abilities to succeed as a husband, father, business owner, and man, both now and in the future, end quote. Well, frankly, the friends and family did not help Josh succeed in not being a criminal because he is a criminal and he's a convicted felon of very heinous crimes. And to say that he has friends and family who will help him in succeeding in these areas in the future is laughable, frankly, because the accountability has not been there from the beginning that I am aware of, the abuse that occurred within the Duggars home against minors, against tiny minors, and consequences were not there. So no, Michelle, the friends and family have not helped and supported him in these areas. And that's unfortunate because he is a criminal and he has been allowed to get away with a lot of crimes against your other children 
and against other people and no more. He is no longer getting away with that. He is in prison. He has arrived at the federal prison and is living out his sentence behind bars. Also, it's of interest that in all of these letters to the Honorable Timothy Brooks, that Jim Bob Duggar did not write a letter. My personal opinion, I think it could be because the judge already found his testimony uh, before Josh's trial to not be believable. And perhaps that's why Jim Bob did not write one. Perhaps it's also trying to appeal to Judge Brooks from a female perspective, and that's why Michelle and Anna were the ones to write the letters. And perhaps Jim Bob is even in a way punishing Michelle for Josh's heinous crimes by putting the pressure on her to write the letter or even pinning the letter himself. I wouldn't be surprised if Jim Bob pinned this letter and made Michelle sign it. Or, you know, that she joyfully submitted to Jim Bob and signed it because he told her to. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Michelle wrote, quote, as I look to his return, end quote. Michelle didn't say, I look forward to his return. She said, I, as I look to his return. There's a big difference between as I look to his return versus I look forward to his return. Michelle didn't say she looks forward to his return which I find very interesting and perhaps a tinge of honest grief. Who knows what else is behind that? But I do want to point that out as it stuck out to me. That concludes my comments on Michelle's letter. Let's move on to Anna's letter. And I'm going to read you Anna's letter. It's dated March 7th, 2022, addressed to the Honorable Timothy Brooks. The, he's a United States District Judge in the United States District Court in the Western District of Arkansas. Provided the address in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Anna writes, Your Honor, I am writing regarding my husband, Joshua Duggar, who will come before you for sentencing as his spouse of more than 13 years. Thank you for taking the time to allow me to share about the man I know and love. Joshua and I met nearly 16 years ago. As our friendship grew over the next two years, I saw what I know to be even more true today, that Joshua is considerate, respectful, quick to forgive, patient, and genuinely the kindest person I know. We were happily married on September 26, 2008. During our first few years of marriage, Joshua and I enjoyed working together at our used car lot in Springdale. There, I admired my husband's diligence in his work and also his perspective that people are more important than a quick sale. Joshua would often spend hours out of his day chatting with and listening to various homeless people who would pass by on the sidewalk. And many of our customers also became our friends. It didn't matter who you were or where you came from. Joshua cared for each person because they are created in the image of God and that is what determines their value, not social status. Joshua has worked hard to provide for me and our now seven children. But the happiest part of the day by far is when daddy comes home from work and his cheerful voice fills the house. Hey guys, how's it going? What did you learn about in school today? Are usually the conversation starters in between greeting each of our children. Joshua is an engaged dad who gladly throws a football with his sons, listens to our daughters play a new song they have learned on the piano, helps answer homework questions, or lends a hand sweeping up spilled crackers. He is a kind, loving, supportive, and caring father and husband, his primary focus in life. My children and I rely on Joshua for financial, emotional, and physical support. Many others depend on Joshua too. Joshua is a man who frequently volunteers his time, services, and resources, striving to contribute to our community and people in need. 
four years ago, one of our good friends, Clark Wilson, passed away from cancer at the age of 57. Joshua took it upon himself to financially support his widowed Denise and the children they still have living at home. For the past four years, Joshua has quietly and faithfully made significant financial contributions to meet their needs. This was not because we have excess income, but because Joshua has a compassionate heart and he is willing to make personal sacrifices for the benefit of others. Joshua embodies the quote from Ronald Reagan, quote, there is no limit to the amount of good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit, end quote. Joshua is quick to step in and do whatever he can to be a team builder and help others accomplish their goals without ever needing to receive recognition or praise. Joshua sees the best in people and is willing to walk alongside them to help make their dreams a reality. Several years ago, a man named Tommy stopped by the car lot. It was shortly after a snowfall. Tommy was looking for work and asked if he could earn some extra cash by doing a quick wash on each of our cars on the lot. Joshua quickly noticed how thorough Tommy was and asked if he would be willing to come by each week to wash our cars. Over time, Joshua offered to help Tommy get set up in business and recommended some of our car dealer friends use his washing services as well. Before long, with Joshua's help, Tommy was able to purchase a truck and some equipment of his own. Tommy hired a few employees and was soon running a successful small business. It felt good knowing my husband saw something in Tommy and that he had inspired and enabled him to go for the opportunity to better provide for his family as a small business owner. We continued to use Tommy's washing services for many years. Thank you, Your Honor, for taking these thoughts into consideration. Joshua is surrounded by people who will encourage him to continue to become the best man, father, and employer he can be. I ask that you consider reuniting us as a family again soon. I understand the seriousness of this matter. However, I respectfully ask that you take this letter into consideration when determining a fair sentence. Thank you, Anna Duggar. And then it provides her P.O. box in Tawnytown, Arkansas. So Anna's letter. This is packed. <laughs> so packed. First, Anna says Josh is, quote, genuinely the kindest person I know, end quote. And that Josh's perspective are, quote, people are more important, end quote. Anna sat through the entire trial. She heard all of the evidence for herself. And it astounds me in some ways as a survivor that she could hear all of the evidence herself and still say these things that Joshua is the kindest man person she knows and that his perspective is that people are more important because it's not true in that he consumed and downloaded and participated in the exploitation of those tiny innocent children through consuming and using child sexual abuse material as well as perpetrating abuse on the five Jane Doe's years ago. So I disagree, I strongly disagree that he's the kindest person and that people are more important in his opinion. However, I also understand from the cult perspective and the brainwashing why Anna said these things uh, because her role as Josh's wife is her number one role is to support him and make him successful that is what she's doing here in this letter only speaking the good and trying to even manipulate the good or seemingly possibly good things in order to make him look good i mean the examples that she provides that josh talks to homeless people for hours that is not a good use of time when you're trying to provide for your family to spend hours talking to 
anyone and including homeless people. Anna also says Josh, quote, cared for each person because they are created in the image of God, end quote. This, this sentence makes me want to vomit because Anna's saying that he's doing this. However, he has perpetrated sexual abuse against five minor females and also is a convicted felon, a convicted felon regarding child sexual abuse material. How do all these things, perpetrating abuse against five minor females, downloading and possessing and using child sexual abuse material, how do these things mesh that Josh cares for each person because they're created in the image of God? What about those children who are being tortured? What about them? What about the five Jane Does? Are you freaking kidding me? I'm so disgusted. And it's so disheartening to see the brainwashing. And also, though, the choice that Anna's making in continuing to stand beside him and to believe in his innocence. He was innocent until proven guilty. He was proven guilty. And... He's not being persecuted. He is guilty. And if episode soon, I'll be talking about the sentence that Judge Brooks provided. I'll be sharing my thoughts on that and more events in the courtroom on that day. And wow, it's a lot. Regardless, Anna sat through all the trial, all the evidence. She heard all of the evidence herself. And even though she says that she understands the seriousness of the matter, she still is asking the judge to reunite Josh with their family soon. Well, that also does not mesh well. Those tiny little children who call her mother are in grave danger. And her position as a wife in the cult, as a wife under these cult beliefs, It doesn't matter that it doesn't matter about the guidelines that have been provided both before the trial and after, like during probation, which we'll talk about. Those don't matter to those within the cult. They won't honor them. The guidelines themselves won't protect the children because the adults will not enforce it, especially since they're claiming that he's innocent. No, they don't understand the seriousness of the matter. And a large part of that is because sexual abuse runs rampant in the cult. It is a sex cult and sex abuse within families happens quite often. And unfortunately, not a lot of people stand up against it and more and more there are. So that's really good. And I and I really do hope that Anna will start to see the light and start to see the truth and start to feel the difference of not having daily communication with Josh, not having daily calls for hours with Josh. And I'm hoping that she can get enough time and distance away from Jim Bob and Michelle too. Back to the letter. Anna also talks about the people who will continue to encourage Josh to become the best person that he can be. Well, as I said about Michelle's comments along the same lines, they haven't done that so far. So it hasn't worked. So why would it work now? And he's a convicted felon, a convicted child sexual abuse material felon. So no, people have not encouraged him, have not been successful, have not held him accountable, have not put things in place to protect children. No, nope. The examples that Anna provides regarding Josh coming back home from work and engaging with the children are simple, representations of 
basic life. I mean, this is not anything special. This is what parents do. They spend time with their kids. They pick up spilled crackers. I mean, really, what parent has not done that? I think all of us have. So that's not really any amazing things that he's doing. That's just basic life. The financial support to Mrs. Wilson, Mrs. Denise Wilson, the widow of Clark Wilson. Anna would not have called Clark and Denise by their first names. She would call them Mr. and Mrs. And yet, here in the letter, they're trying to portray the normality. I imagine the attorneys have helped try to remove some of those cult, cult lingo and cult culture out of these letters to try to make them seem more normal and more palatable to the judge and to the public. Because obviously also, they leaked these documents by purposely filing them in a separate way so that they would become public record and people would see them. That was of course very purposeful. That was not an accident at all. Uh, but we'll talk about that more later. Back to the financial support for Denise Wilson. I think it's interesting to see that the way Anna talks about this and Josh's contributions to Denise is that um, she says Joshua has quietly and faithfully made significant financial contrib contributions. And then, quote, this was not because we have excess income, but because Joshua has a compassionate heart and he is willing to make personal sacrifices for the benefit of others, end quote. Now, without actually saying this, Anna does communicate that Joshua made these decisions. This was not a mutual decision between them. Joshua made the decision. Joshua took it upon himself. And that's a quote. Joshua, quote, Joshua took it upon himself, end quote. This was not we, jo or Joshua and I, decided to support Denise. This was Joshua did it. Joshua made contributions to take care of this widow and her children. And, and the interesting comment, not because we have excess income, and this shows me a little glimpse too of Anna felt the neglect, I would imagine, that of the significant financial contributions from Josh to Denise Wilson. Anna felt the neglect of those. And now she's been taught and brainwashed that it's uh, spiritual and righteous to neglect your own needs, to sacrifice, because that's her role. And that's um, who she was raised to be. And that's the role that she's fulfilling. She doesn't talk anything about her sacrifice. And I imagine that she bore a lot of that sacrifice and of trying to figure out how to make the ends meet and how to take care of their, all their children and still give this money. The way she signs off the letter is of note. She doesn't say sincerely, she doesn't say respectfully, she just says thank you. Now it's good to say thank you, that's polite. However, it has a tinge of arrogance and disrespect to the judge to end in that manner, in my opinion. The last thing I wanna say about Anna's letter is her name dropping of Ronald Reagan and inserting the quote, the quote from Ronald Reagan, um, quote, there is no limit to the amount of good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit, end quote. This was an idea also pushed by the cult that you should be willing to do anything necessary and not even get the credit. Like you shouldn't care who gets the credit for what you do. And that idea was pushed quite a bit. But she's definitely name dropping Ronald Reagan. And of course he's idolized by um, the conservative right in the United States and, um, and certainly by the Duggars uh, and many within the cult. 
idolize him. So that concludes my comments on Anna and Michelle's letters. What you may not know yet about my own story is that I also was a wife under the cult beliefs. I married someone who adhered to the beliefs and the teachings of IBLP and adored Bill Gothard and still does to this day. So I do have empathy for Michelle and for Anna as I know the pressure that they are under. I know the responsibility that they hold on their shoulders, the lack of agency as females, as humans. They both have been denied that. Uh, I know the expectation and demand to submit and that your voice doesn't matter and your opinion doesn't matter and the I know that I know what that type of abuse feels like and I know the cloudiness that comes with it so as I speak these things and as I say these hard things because I did say some very strong things about Michelle and Anna. I want to share that part a glimpse into my own story because I do care about these women. I care about Michelle, I care about Anna. And I also know that they're adults and they've made, even amidst the brainwashing even amidst the subjugation and probably other things, they are mothers and they have chosen their husbands over their children. I hope and pray for both Michelle and Anna that the truth will set them free too. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and follow wherever you listen to your podcast or on YouTube. And also check out my website, out of the shadows with Mary Murphy.com and my new Instagram account, out of the shadows with Mary Murphy. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and your feedback. And I just also want to say thank you to everyone who has connected and shared your stories, these little glimpses into your own stories. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you listening and your solidarity. And thank you for caring about the truth.